Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel. My name is Joseph. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how you can transform a rather simple and basic studio portrait into something dynamic, interesting, with lots of color and interest in the image. What we're going to do is change the background color to something nice and suitable. We're also going to add smoke and a little bit of noise to put the image in place. Before I start, I'm going to do a very quick run through um, everything I have done because this is already an edited image. So all I did was fill in the hair just behind the neck, added um, a little bit of liquify, I did a, a little bit of healing, frequency separation to smoothing out the skin tones. Dodge and Bend was done in two stages where the first one was mainly to blend the skin tones even more. And the second one was to contour and add a three-dimensional look to the image by adding shadow to the cheekbones, to the uh, bridge of the nose, the lower lip, neck area for that three-dimensional effect and I also popped up the color some more. So this is where we are after all the stages that I have done and we're going to jump right into today's tutorial. So what I'm going to do first of all is merge everything I have done and put it on a brand new layer and I'm going to do that on a Mac by hitting shift alt command and E. What that is going to do is copy everything that I have done below, create a new layer and paste it on that layer. Now what I'm going to do is I need to separate my subject from the background. Initially we used to use a pen tool um, or any other selection tool in Photoshop like the quick selection tool for example. But in this case, I'm using Photoshop CC 2018 and there's an update where Photoshop can intelligently do this for me. So what I'm going to do is hit W for my selection tool and I have two options here, select subject and select mask. Any of them I can use as a base to start my selection, but I want to intelligently select the subject from the background because in this case, the subject and the background look very, very different. And so it's going to be easy for Photoshop to do the selection for me. So I'm going to hit select subject. Now Photoshop is going to do its calculations and select the, um, the subject um, out of the background neatly. Now you can see I have the matching ants all around the image. It means this image is selected, but I want to further check and see if it has done an accurate job. So what I'm going to do is hit select and mask and it's going to open up a new dialog box where I have even more options um, to tweak the selection that Photoshop made for me. So what I'm going to do next is look at the outline and see if there's anything Photoshop missed. It didn't really miss anything. I like the way it is. All I'm going to do is use my um, refine edge, refine brush edge tool and then maybe just paint over this area like so, so that the gray um, that is showing through will be decontaminated and whatever background I put the image on is going to show through. All right. So what I'm going to do next is simply make sure my output is to a new layer and with layer mask and I'm going to hit OK. Now that I am back in Photoshop um, into my basic panel, I have a mask attached to the image. What I'm going to do is work beneath the layer and so I'm going to create a new group and I'm going to call that background or BG effects because what I'm going to do is put effects in there and I'm going to bring that under my layer. So what, what I'm going to do is everything that I'm going to do which is supposed to be in the background is going to be placed in this group just so I can stay organized. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a solid color and currently my default is white so it's going to place a white background and like, you know, you can, you can run through this and get any color that you want. I'm going to look for something around this area like so, and I'm going to press OK. I really like this color and this is what I'm going to do. Now the background looks flat. There's no dimension to it. So what I'm going to do next is first of all, add some um, gradient just so I can separate the subject from the background and I'm going to do that by pressing this new layer icon, pressing G on my keyboard, which is going to bring up the gradient tool, make sure it's set to gradient and also make sure I'm set to white to transparent. 
what I'm gonna do next is click in the middle and drag out so what that is gonna do is create a white hotspot behind here and gradate outside and still let the color the background color seep through but this is a bit much I don't want it to be this strong so I'm gonna pull the opacity down like so just just so it's there it's, it's subtle but it works now on top of this I'm gonna create a new blank layer I'm gonna click edit go to fill and I'm gonna add 50% to gray it's on this layer that I'm gonna create my noise layer so I'm gonna go to filter noise and add noise the reason why I'm adding noise is because I don't want it to look flat obviously if this was an actual shoot um, there's gonna be a little bit of noise from the camera sensor and that is what I'm trying to replicate so right now it doesn't look interesting I'm gonna change the layer 3 it's blending mode to soft light so that I can still let the background color show through now it looks too noisy especially because she looks much more clean and we wouldn't expect this much noise to be on the background so I'm gonna reduce the opacity as well to about 35 or 36 percent and it looks fine I'm gonna rename this layer to noise and I'm gonna rename the layer to to gradient and I'm gonna make two copies first I'm gonna make a copy of the color fail and I'm gonna make a copy of the noise now I'm gonna command or control click on the new layers I created and I'm gonna drag them to the top the reason why I'm doing this is because currently um, let me group them also and put it in the foreground so command G and name it foreground or FG effects it's not necessarily gonna be effects but I'm just naming it so I stay organized I'm gonna open the group now um, and before that let me hide what I have done you can tell she looks very orange and it doesn't look like she was shot on this background the reason why I made the copy of the color is because let me make it visible go to the color and I'm gonna change the blending mode from normal to soft light it looks too strong so I'm gonna change from soft light to color now even though soft light looked better it looked like it had a lot of saturation so I'm bringing it to color so that the color just um, washes over what was um, there before that is her skin tone and all I'll do is just bring down the opacity to about say 10% and also bring down the fill to say 60% maybe increase the opacity a little bit more so I'm just gonna do a before and after of that color so you see what it does so a before she looks very orange after she has a little bit of that color on here so it looks like this is where she was shot now you notice that the noise is on her skin as well let me zoom in here and it's on the background so let me do a before and after of the noise so before and after so it's affecting both her skin and the background but I just want it to affect hair so what I'm gonna do is press alt and clip the effect to, to this and so when I do it before and after you can see that it's affecting just her skin or maybe not necessarily I can just go down on the opacity some more which is fine anyway it would work all right now what I'm gonna do next is add smoke so I want the smoke to be behind her and not on top of her so I'm gonna go back into my background effects I'm gonna open the group I want this to be in between the noise and the color just so the noise is still gonna affect the smoke that I'm gonna put in the background so I'm gonna click the gradient um, layer create a new layer and it's going to be created on top of the gradient layer I'm going to rename this to smoke and I'm going to put a link in the description showing where I got the smoke brush from in case you want to replicate this or do something else with it you can you can download it and use it for your project as well so I'm going to hit B for my brush tool you can tell I already have the smoke um, brush but I can just go through the whole process again so what I'm going to do is select let's say this brush and I will paint to see how it looks like right now it's not randomized smoke never looks this way so I'm gonna undo the painting that I made I'm gonna go into my brush preset and I'm gonna change a few things okay so currently 
this is how the brush looks like right i'm gonna click on shape dynamics and what i'm gonna do is increase my size jitter i'm also gonna change the control to pen pressure because i'm using a wacom tablet and i'm gonna change the minimum diameter i'm gonna add a little bit of angle jitter so that the brush doesn't uh, the smoke doesn't look the same so when i paint here you can tell we're getting different directions and even different sizes as well what i'm going to do next is change its control also to pen pressure and maybe add a little bit of roundness as well then i'm going to come down to scattering and i'm going to uh, allow it to scatter on both axes i'm going to increase um, my scatter like so maybe paint a little to see how it looks and it's being randomized quite a bit Gonna change the control also to pen pressure and paint again and i think i like the way it's looking so what i'm gonna do is hit command a once i'm selected once i have the smoke layer selected and i'm just gonna press delete and it's gonna delete all these uh brush strokes that i made so what i'm gonna do is start painting and you can tell that the stroke is 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 building up and we are beginning to see the smoke effect in the background Maybe I'm going to increase my flow a little bit like so, paint again, and it's adding up more smoke. Now this looks a bit realistic and I really really like it because it's scattering, it's not too controlled. I'm just going to go over this area like so, go over this area some more, make it smaller even, and maybe just go around here like that. Now what I'm going to do is, I find it to be a little bit too strong, so I'm just going to reduce the opacity till. I'm okay with the effect. Maybe what I can do is create a new layer and name it Smoke 2. Smoke 2. And I'm gonna increase my flow all the way to 100%. Increase my brush size, make it big. And maybe click, click, click. What I'm doing is I just wanna add a little bit of some stronger smoke to the shot. And I'm just going to reduce the opacity as well, just to about this point. And so we have this and we have this. All right. I still think the smoke to opacity is a bit strong. Maybe let me just go down on the fill just like so. Even go back to the smoke layer, also reduce the fill just a little bit like this. And there we have it. We've been able to transform a rather simple and basic uh, studio portrait into this beautiful art piece. If you like this tutorial, give it a like, thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share it to your friends who you think will find this interesting, and I'll see you in the next episode.